This is the start of Section 9, which is titled Asynchronous Programming with Celery. In this section, you will be introduced to Celery. Specifically, we will show you what Celery does and how it can be used to improve your application. The first video in this section is titled Installing and Understanding Celery. In this video, we will go over how Celery works and we will also install all of the software necessary for Celery. Then, we will write some code to begin integrating Celery into our project. So, what is Celery? Celery is a system designed to allow programmers to offload expensive operations out of their program's process and into another process. This is important for us. It will block the rest of the processing that needs to be done until the expensive operation is over. Celery is an asynchronous task queue written in Python. Celery runs tasks, which are user-defined functions, concurrently, meaning multiple at once, through the Python multiprocessing library. Celery receives messages that tell it to start a task from a message broker, which is usually a message queue. A message queue is a system specifically designed to send data between producer processes and consumer processes. Producer processes are any programs that create messages to be sent in the queue, and consumer processes are any programs that take the messages out of the queue. Messages are stored until a consumer receives the message, after which the message is deleted. Message queues provide real-time messaging without relying on polling, the process of continually checking the status of a process. When messages are sent from producers, consumers are listening on their connection to the message queue for new messages. The consumer is not constantly contacting this queue. This difference is like the difference between AJAX and WebSockets. AJAX requires constant contact with the server, while WebSockets are just a continuous stream. To understand this better, Let's walk through an example. Say we have an expensive database operation and we want to have the main Flask process do other things while the operation is going on. First, we would define a Celery task that performs our SQL call. Then, in the view function that required the operation, we call the task we defined. This creates a message and sends it to the message broker. The Celery process consumes the message and starts the called task. Remember that this does not affect Flask because they are running in different processes. When the task finishes, Celery then sends a message into the queue containing the status of the tasks and results of the tasks if it has returned a statement. To start setting up Celery, we need to install a piece of software and two Python libraries. First, we can install Celery from pip. We also will install a Flask helper library for Celery called Flask Celery Helper. We will be using Redis as our message broker in this course, so let's specify in pip that we will be using Celery with Redis. Also, we are going to be using the fourth version of Celery, which has official support for Python 3.5, which we are using. Right now the default version is the third, so I have to specify the exact version. However, if you are using Windows, install the third version of Celery instead of the fourth, since the fourth version doesn't support Windows. The code we will write should work for both versions of Celery, since we are not going to use advanced features of Celery. Redis can be installed in many ways. Go to their website at redis.io. I recommend visiting the download page. If you are running Linux, you can use your package manager to install appropriate packages. For example, if you are running Ubuntu, Type apt-get install Redis server, Redis tools. If you are running Windows, use this link and follow the instructions here on this GitHub page. If you are running OS X, I recommend using Homebrew to install Redis. Homebrew is a package manager for OS X and Mac OS, and it can help you install many different programs and libraries. Installing Redis with Homebrew is simple. Just type brew install Redis. If you don't want to use a package manager, you can always build Redis from source. Then we have to create a function called make underscore Celery, which will create a Celery application that is tied to an application context and takes a Flask application as its only argument. In this function, we first create a Celery application passing in the configuration values, which we will add later to our configuration objects. 
We then update the celery configuration to hold all of the values that our flask configuration holds. This allows us to configure celery without having to create a separate configuration object. Next is the code that will mess with the celery internals to get the application context working. Don't worry if you don't understand what is going on here. It's not important while using celery. Finally, the function will return the celery object. To end the file, we create an application instance with create app and then pass the application to the make underscore celery function and save it to a variable named celery, which the celery process will use to try to run the application. Now in the config.py file, we need to add two values, one to tell celery where our messages to start tasks will go and one to tell celery where the results of tasks will go. These values are named celery underscore broker underscore URL and celery underscore backend underscore URL respectively. Both of these values will be the same, a SQL Alchemy style URL to read our Redis instance. Next, we have to create another celery application object in the extensions.py file using Flask Celery Helper. We also have to manually set the back end of the new celery object like so. Finally, on the underscore init underscore dot py file, we import the celery object and register it on the application object in the create underscore app function. Okay, so far we have a solid understanding of what celery is and how it can be used in our application. We also have all of the code we need to start creating tasks.